deja vu, right? <laughs> yeah, you just saw this same lovely screen in part one, but now it's part two. So we're gonna finish up with Kingdom Animalia. We are almost done. Hang with me, okay? Honey badger don't care, remember? All right, so let's finish up with some of the phylums. I'm gonna go through these again kind of quick. They're all in your lesson. I'm not gonna test you on anything very super, super specific. Know a little bit about kind of where the phylas are as far as, um, you know, under what kingdom and then what classes, blah, 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 blah. we'll go over that, okay? Don't, don't overwhelm yourself, okay? But I do wanna give you guys some information about this. So the phylum Annelida, as you can see, look at these lovely things. I actually have this weird affinity for these, okay? They have a specialized digestive tract. Um, they're well, they have actually have a well-developed heart with a closed circulatory system, which is very important that blood's not just kind of going everywhere. They have a closed system, okay? That actually is very specialized. Body's divided into segments. You can see all these different segments. They eat soil, break down organic matter, waste provide nutrients to soil. So these are really important, okay? Oh, I just, um, sorry, I repeated myself down there. Have a closed circulatory system. But these are really, really important because when we talk about these, I'm gonna talk about leeches and some um, important things that leeches provide us with. So let's kind of go through real quick. As you can see, again, they actually have numerous hearts, okay? A very well-defined um, circulatory system. It's a closed circulatory system. They're segmented. They have body cavities. They have excretory organs. They have all sorts of things that make them a little bit more complex than kind of the average um, round worm or, or even a flatworm, okay? Um, there are three classes. The polychaeta, so these are marine worms with crazy little feet. They are kind of crazy. Um, they're called parapodia, and I don't think I have a good picture of them right now. Um, maybe I thought I did, but they have these crazy little feet and then something that are called setae that help them move about. So parapodia are paddle-like extensions used in swimming. They also serve as respiratory organs, believe it or not. And then the setae are these bristles that are attached to those. So it helps with locomotion as well. Okay, um, the class oligocata, which are the earthworms, which we're used to seeing a lot, these lovely things right here, okay? So earthworms are actually so important for the soil. They kind of break it up. Um, you know, they just provide a lot of actual nutrients, especially when they decay and <clears throat> stuff like that. So earthworms are actually very important. And then our Hyrodinia. Okay, these are the leeches. And although I think they're kind of disgusting and gross, and I wanted to show you my favorite clip for my movie, but um, due to copyright issues, I cannot show the video and then post it on YouTube. But if any of you, if any of you guys, I can't talk, if any of you guys have seen Stand By Me, and if you haven't seen it, see it. It's a great movie about these kids that kind of take this journey by themselves. But anyways, um, there's a there's one scene where basically they um, walk through this swamp and then they are just infested with leeches. Leeches will, as you can see, latch on to skin and they start to suck blood. But the cool thing about leeches, even though they're freaky, um, they actually serve a medical purpose, okay? So actually leeches are used to kind of um, stop bleeding or get bleeding going. Uh, I shouldn't say stop bleeding because they're gonna they're gonna suck things, but they're going to um, kind of help with kind of the healing process when it comes to getting blood to different parts of maybe the skin or something that has not had blood supplied. So leeches are actually um, used medically, so it's kind of cool. Okay, moving on. So the phylum uh, Arthropoda, over one million species. Doesn't that make you so excited that there's over one million species of these crazy creatures? Okay, the largest group of organisms on Earth are the arthropoda. They have jointed appendages, so they have their head, thorax, and abdomen. They have an exoskeleton that they periodically molt, so they'll shed it, okay? So spiders, crayfish, insects, a lot of those um, have that exoskeleton that they'll molt away. A well-developed nervous system, more complex respiratory system, and they're classified into classes according to the number of legs, eyes, and antenna they have, which is kind of interesting. So, you know, you've heard of a lot of the um, insects that have six legs versus the spiders or the arachnids have that have eight. So um, they are classified into different classes based on that. So here are some of the different um, arthropods, and there's many different types, but crabs are a part of this, centipedes, bumblebees, and spiders. And if you notice, crabs have five legs, spiders have four pairs of legs, 
Um, sorry, five pairs of legs, not five legs. Um, bumblebees have three pairs of legs, so six total. And the centipede have one pair of legs for each segment. So again, that there's so many different classes under the arthropoda, not just um, you know spiders or not just insects. All of these are encompassed in this one phylum. Okay, so there's some subphylums that are divided into classes. So again, within this huge, huge phylum, you have all this breakdown. Okay, to kind of um, basically break these things into smaller levels of organization. So you have the arachnida, the spiders, scorpions, ticks, and mites. Look at that. There's a tick. Look at what that's done to that person. Ah, I was um, bitten by a tick when I was a kid, right in the back of my neck. And someone tried to, you know, they basically burrow their head in your skin and they start to suck your blood. Doesn't that sound appetizing? Mm. So um, anyways, basically sometimes you can put heat to a tick and it'll cause them to back out because you never want to basically yank out the tick because it'll leave their head in your skin and it can um, be a really, really bad infection. Um, so, anyways, this person put some heat to it and burned it dead in my skin. Yes, I had to have it surgically removed at age, I was probably five, I think I was five, four or five. Um, I actually remember that very vividly. And then the Maristomata, such as the horseshoe crabs, which are really cool. Um, if you go to the zoo, you'll see those in the tropical rainforest place. It's really, they're really kind of cool looking. Okay, and then we go into the class Arachnida. No antenna, four pairs of legs, so eight total. Two body regions, the cephalothorax and the abdomen, are only the two segments within these. These are the spiders, the scorpions, the mites, and the ticks. Here's yet another picture of a tick that's burrowing in someone's skin. Yummy. Okay, and then the class Maristomatus, the horseshoe crab. So here's a good, good picture of them. They're kind of crazy looking, not your typical what you think of a crab. Um, they are a very ancient group of species. They've been around for a long time. They haven't changed over 350 million years. So they've been here a long time. Um, oops, and my picture is kind of in the way. But basically, they are aquatic, and then they're mostly found on the Atlantic and the Gulf Coast of the United States. Okay, so there's some um, important facts about that. Okay, all right. Now moving on, the subphylum Crustacea. So there's five classes under the Crustacea. You have aquatic ones that have gills. You have, they have two antenna, two body regions are segmented. These include shrimp, lobsters, crabs, barnacles, isopods. I mean, again, there's a ton of them. And then, of course, I have to add in that many of these species taste delicious butter. Um, I don't know if any of you guys like lobster. Mm, mm, mm. So I love lobster. I love shrimp. I love crab. I've never had a barnacle. I've never had an isopod. But I've never eaten a um, roly-poly either, just for the record. But um, there are tons of different types of crustaceans. But the most one, the ones that we know the most about are the crabs and the lobsters and such. Okay. All right, and then the Myriopoda. These contain arthropods um, that have unbranched appendages. So such as the centipede, we call these the Chylopoda, and the Myriopoda, the millipedes, and then also our class Insecta. Okay, so there's three classes under the subphylum. Again, breaking this, we're still in that phylum, um, Arthropoda, and we're just breaking it down so much, okay? So just know that that is a huge phylum. So the subphylum here is now breaking in, broken into three different classes. So you'll see that the class Insecta is huge as well. I mean, think of all the insects, insects that you could name, and that's just, you know, just a teeny portion of them. There are tons of insects. But again, of course, that can, this also, um, the subphylums contain these classes that have to do with the millipedes and the centipedes, okay? All right, deuterostomes and protostomes. So I just want to define these. There's no pictures, and as soon as I read why, you'll know why. So protosomes um, are basically known to develop the mouth first. So when you have that fertilization and you have the, um, the cells that are differentiating, it develops the mouth first, the protosomes. Deuterosomes develop the anus first. Yeah, so enough said. I don't need to give you any pictures. Just remember those terms. How about that? I couldn't even find any pictures if I wanted to. I mean, what, is it going to show me like this mouth that's being formed first versus an anus? Don't know about that. Okay, phylum echinodermata. The echinoderms, um, you know, you, we know the uh, sea stars. You know, we see those a lot in aquariums and such. Uh, a sea cucumber, 
So there's all sorts of different echinodermatas, these sea urchins. They're very cool. They have kind of these, um, you know, spiny look to them. But basically, they have an internal skeleton, which we're kind of shocked to think, whoa, they have an internal skeleton? Isn't the outside their, their exoskeleton? No, they have an internal skeleton. So these include the sea stars, the sea cucumbers, the sand dollars. Um, they are underdeveloped organs and systems. So their nervous and their circulatory as well as their respiratory system are pretty underdeveloped. They will typically only live in salt water. Um, I've never really even heard of a sea star or anything um, of such nature living in like fresh water. So they live in the oceans. They have radial symmetry. And the name Echinodimerta, or Echinodermata um, means spiny skin. So obviously you can see why, especially from the sea urchin, okay? All right, the phylum chordata. We're getting kind of towards the end here. There's five classes, okay? You have fish, mammals, reptiles, amphibians, and birds, okay? Chordatas. So again, there's a lot of classes under this phylum. This is the most advanced animals, okay? So well-developed brain and central nervous system, bilaterally symmetrical, so basically cut it down the middle, and you have an equal right and left. This includes birds, fish, bony and cartilage fish, so cartilaginous fish are included in this chordata, um, amphibians, reptiles, and mammals, okay? So that includes us. They all reproduce sexually, okay? All of us in this phylum chordata reproduce sexually. You have to have a sperm and an egg that come together and are fertilized, okay? There's no um, asexual means. Most chordates have an internal skeleton against which muscles work. And then most have a tail that extends beyond the anus. Except for us. Thank goodness. Subphylum cephalochordata. So the lancelets, um, those are just a subphylum. Um, basically a very basic uh, chordata. Okay, so, but um, I don't have a lot to say about these. It talks about them a little bit in your lesson, but um, that it does phylum, fall into a subphylum. The subphylum verbra, uh, vertebrata, animals with backbones. Duh, right? Um, so vertebrata, so anything that has a backbone is going to be in that subphylum, okay? So there's lots of classes, of course, when you can think about that. Lots of different things have backbones. So think of all the classes that's, a, that's going to be broken down into. The chondriacthes, okay? This includes the skates, rays, and sharks, the cartilaginous fish. Um, bodies are covered in epidermal placoid, which is kind of like tooth-like scales. They're very thick, coarse, and rigid, okay? But the chondriacthes um, are definitely part of the vertebrata. The osteichthys are the bony fish. Okay, oste is um, a Latin term for bone, so oste, bone, um, bony fish, ichthys. So obviously, there's different classes when it comes to the fish. Tetrapods are forelimbed or four-footed creatures. I call them creatures; they're organisms, but creatures. Um, so you'll see that term thrown around quite a bit: a tetrapod, forelimbed, four-footed. Um, more classes. You have the class amphibia. So obviously these return to the water to mate and lay eggs. Um, they have very inefficient lungs. Okay, so gas exchange has to be kind of through moist skin, moist air. Um, they are ectothermic. Okay, so that means they depend on the external heat to regulate their body temperatures, which is kind of a big deal. Okay, because um, you know they have to have a certain environment in order to survive. And then you have the class reptilia. Okay, so. All of your reptiles are in that class. And then some more classes, the aves. So these have feathers and mostly fly. Not all of them, not all of them fly, but most, okay? So go figure. And then of course, the class mammalia. So they have hair, the presence of three middle ear bones comes into the mammals, and the production of milk by mammary glands, okay? So those are the big three things that, um, that happen with mammals, okay? All right, short and sweet, right? We are done with biodiversity, biological diversity in the past. Next time you see me, I'll be in the plant structure with you. All right, have a lovely day, night, morning, whenever you're watching this.